All right, here is the 390 getting ready to be prepped for paint. Well, halfway done with the prep anyway, as far as masking is concerned, but uh, I'm gonna prime it up with some adhesive promoter and I'm gonna prep the paint gun and stuff and get ready to go here in a little bit. So it's kind of 10 o'clock in the morning. It's a good day. So the uh, coop's been rolled out. It's been far enough away to be safe. Got the water pump up there as well. And we're gonna have a good go with this today. So got finally got the head dowels in last Friday. So was able to uh, properly install and torque the heads, put the valley pan in, reassembled the heat shield on the bottom of the intake manifold, installed and torqued the intake manifold. The, uh, the RTV on the China rails been drying for well over a day now. So we're in a good, happy place. Be ready for paint. So uh, we did have a problem trying to paint the balancer. So uh, <laughs> as you can see, that's not ready for paint. But I uh, started looking at it, you know, start getting ready to, I cleaned it off with some solvents and was getting ready to mask it off. And I noticed there was a gap between the, uh, the rubber ring and the inner portion. So I took my uh, little mallet, threw a couple of swings at a hammer, it started uh, to separate and I just kept whacking it and whacking it and it just slowly worked it out. So this balancer would not have been good at all. So it's gonna, we need to replace it. It's not too, uh, not a show stop at the moment because this could always be painted later and stuck on the engine after that's been painted. I'll just paint this with my airbrush or something. Got the timing pointer here. I'll not worry about that. I'll paint that at the same time we do this. But uh, yeah, uh, a little setback, but I mean, these balancers aren't anything cosmic. And they're not very expensive either. I just got to order one from the States. Probably not going to have a, a 1968 part number on it anymore. Probably be made in China one or something, but we'll see. We'll get on with that. Here's what we're going to use for paint. I love this stuff. So I got one engine out of this already. We are 15 inch of enamel and Ford corporate blue. So this is the best color of blue that I have found to recreate the original Ford stuff. Rattle cans from Duple Color and the, the likes. Yeah, they have old Ford blue, new Ford blue, the Ford blue, and none, none of the ones that they make match at all. So I don't know how they can keep selling them and people keep buying them. The colors are close, but they're not, I mean, for a, a paint company to not be able to match a color, it's kind of amazing to me. So, uh, anyway, I'm gonna prep this up. There's the, the detail gun. So, this dryer is pretty new from last time. And uh, we'll get cranking on this. So, I'll show you me prepping it up, and I'll bring you back when we're ready to spray. All right, we're getting ready to prime it up. So people will say that you have to prep this thing like auto body style thing with all kinds of etch primers and things and get ready for like a show quality paint job. To me that just makes the paint chip easier and if it does chip, it chips right down to the primer. Ford originally, they never primed shit. So why should we, <laughs> why does everybody else need to feel the need to prime everything? So the engine enamel goes, is supposed to be direct to metal. That's what we're gonna do. I've already prepped everything with a mixture sprayer of lacquer thinner and a, a wax and grease remover for in the states here they call it like pre-wipe prep or something like that so what i like using an adhesive promoter it's clear transparent it gets if there's any oils or contaminants left it'll still allow the paint to stick and this work stuff's pretty expensive this is what they use to, to dye interiors with with sem interior dyes but it still works great on just about everything else so, and this can is almost like 30 bucks now, but uh, I got uh, maybe a quarter of the can left. We should make a good job of this, finish it out, and uh, it'll help in the final product. So it just, it goes on clear, and a little goes a long way. So I'm gonna get to this, and I'll bring you back when I'm getting ready to, to mix the paint and heavy spray. All right. I already opened the tin, gave it a, a quick mix you can see the color so I 
mix it up. I have to thin it to spray it because this stuff is too thick by itself. So there's no rule that I found out for how much you can be allowed to thin it. It really doesn't talk about it much on the tin. In the past I've used everything from lacquer thinner to regular uh, reducers to thin this stuff and it's all worked well. Enamel is very forgiving. This is the way that comes in the UK. These big five liter tins. So that's probably about 30 to 40 percent thinner. And I'll see how I like it once it mixes up. See if I need to change or add any more regular paint to get it to where it's the consistency I'm happy with. Thing to note, something as simple as a, a piece of wood as a paint stirring stick is nearly, you can't find them in the England anywhere. Uh, it's just like a, usually you go to paint shops in the States and they'll hand them out free like candy. They're everywhere. But you can't find like a disposable piece of wood to use as a mixing stick in the United Kingdom. Like plastic sticks or other kind of weird things, but just like <laughs> I went from store to store to store looking for them and nobody sells anything like it. And it's just like I don't know how the heck they do it. They just want to find just pieces of stuff to stir paint with. That's what they do, so. I need to add some more paint. I made it a little bit too thin. Respirator, I'm gonna break out. Take all your watches or any kind of clothes off that you don't want to get paint on them. So, I had this thing for a while. It's still good enough just for this. It's not like a full blown car paint job. I kind of like need a new respirator on a regular basis. So, that's good. It's hard to see uh, exactly when the tins or the cup is full. Oh, there. There's my lid. My mask I just put down. Alright, you get prepped. Put you guys on a tripod. done for the most part it turned out well I'm happy there's no fish eyes anywhere it means I got degreased the block really well before we got uh, ready to spray it and the user promoter always uh, helps that regard as well so in a, probably in about 20 minutes I'm gonna be pulling all of these bits of a uh, paper towel shop towel out of all the holes demasking things while it's the paint's still tacky, if you let it go too long, it just makes the job 10 times harder. And you pull lots of little bits of debris and fluff out of every little crack that they ripped off from. So, water pump turned out well. You saw me, uh, I did a, a really light coat to start with that I went around again and again. 
with progressively heavier coats. I, I came over here with the flashlight to get in the cracks just to make sure that I got all nice even coverage. So but yeah, and you can just step back and look at it until that's the right color blue. So, but yeah, this is gonna be nice once all said and done. So, sorry you can't really see very well from the back. Some light out in the driveway, but just did around the edge. You know, didn't paint the pins. You know, I hate when people do that. Then it makes the putting the bell houses coming on and off later on more difficult. So, uh, getting underneath in the pan is hard if when you can't flip the block over. So, yeah, it's gonna be good. So I didn't do a whole lot of filming real time because it's it's always a rush when I'm, I'm painting. So let me turn the music down here. So I just had to get my gun cleaned up, everything out. Everything cleaned up before it got, got too hard. It's pretty easy to clean this stuff up with good solvents. So it's not like it's gonna, it catalyzes with a hardener or anything like that. It's just air cured, but it does, uh, enamel is one of the best paints you could use for temperature resistance and chemical resistance. So a lot of paint jobs you see, as soon as they get like a couple fuel drips anywhere, it's just, just eats the paint right off. And enamel won't do that. So that's one of the reasons why I love that POR 15 engine enamel. So, all right guys, anyway, wrap it up here. It's a Sunday, uh, probably about noon, probably around lunchtime. And uh, I'll catch you guys soon.